My name is Gavin Benfield. I'm the Performance Director at Los Angeles Football Club. One of my primary responsibilities is to ensure good cohesion between the performance and the medical department, to be able to produce an environment or create an environment for athletes, players to improve themselves. And that can be through tech, that can be through the environment that we create, uh, through the preparation for training as well. I think it's very important to come in pretty fit and ready for preseason because a lot of times there could be a lot of injuries during preseason. A lot of guys can have a lot of time off and not get used to the load of the training sessions. So that's where, you know, Gavin and the, the training staff really put together programs for the players to to follow during the off season. And it's designed not to burn you out, but to keep you fit, keep you moving and uh, prepare you for the, the preseason. I think at the end of the day, you're wanting to get everyone on the same train, going in the same direction. But the reality is some guys are getting on the train maybe at two or three stations down and you then got to play a little bit of catch up or almost just fit them into the system. Gavin plays a huge role in, you know, in fitness and injury prevention and all that. He's really able to, you know, calculate the type of load players do on the field. You know, how much we're putting out, how much we need to recover and stuff like that. So I think his, his part is huge in, you know, helping us be able to perform and also become fit. They obviously have a lot of technology now around in the game of, of the soccer and whatnot. So they could collect those numbers, the training loads, the game loads, and you know, they could speak to each player to see which, how much they could give us each training session and how much they should be uh, limited. So I think that's very important to, to prevent the injuries. Yeah. Getting guys into that physical state where they can perform. Yeah, we know that our older players will take a little longer. They tend to be a little bit smarter as well. They're not running themselves into the ground and training. The younger guys, enthusiastic, want to get after it every day, every training session. And sometimes you're almost wanting to teach them, hey, there are moments where you can pump the brakes a little. You don't have to be driving with your foot flat on the gas pedal the whole time. Stay calm, finish the play, and then we, re we reorganize. Understand? I think guys came in pretty fit from what I've seen in some past preseasons. And so kind of helped in the sense of you know, getting to playing more as opposed to focusing on running and actually getting fit. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. But he's a cool guy. He's a cool guy. I love him. Professional sports has embraced the whole idea of data is is valuable and data collecting data on players. But it is also you can go in the wrong direction and just collect for the sake of collecting. You have to collect data that makes sense and is not just noise. If you think of Formula One cars and how much data is collected on the side of the track, that kind of gives an impression of what the car's doing, what the driver's doing, when should he be pushing and when shouldn't he. Now, I'm not saying our players are Formula One cars, but they are highly tuned athletes. When I first started playing, it was more, these are just the data points, like cool, like we have them. Not really much to do with them, like we're just looking at them and this is how much you run in this game when you're doing this and stuff like that. But I think looking at them and then basing what you do after practice, sleep and all that, and that huge incorporation between everything is the biggest thing, yeah. We do collect sleep. So we have a method of tracking their sleep and knowing that sleep is really important for athletes to recover. We also collect GPS data. Now GPS data, you'll see, sometimes the guys will take their shirts off to celebrate a goal and they're wearing this thing, often referred to as a, a bra. That just houses a little device that sits between the shoulder blade. You're tracking distances run, how many sprints they make, how many high intensity direction changes that they're making. So you're trying to quantify the mechanical load of that training session. So you look at the numbers and you see that you haven't done much or you've done too much. Um, and if you haven't done much, it can motivate you, motivate us to, to keep pushing and know that we could keep going even though we feel, feel tired. It might just be a little mentality thing. 
you can only play as long as your body holds up. And that's the biggest part. So when Gavin looks at numbers and like, hey, we got to tone you down or whatever, you just kind of have to listen to it. You can be upset about it, but it's one of those things as a pro that the work you do is just as important as, important as the work you don't do. And so that to me is the biggest part, just understanding both of them and balancing them out. Yeah. The data gets stored on these pods. So these would then connect with the receiver and send the data from the pod to the receiver to the iPad. So I could literally be on the side watching guys and seeing their numbers fluctuating and control how much or how little. The more information I get that can help me is always great information. If you have a Gavin, someone who is really trained in that can read these numbers and can figure out how to turn everything I'm doing on the field into the positive with my experience as well, I think is a great mix. And that's kind of why this off season, I kind of just went all in with whatever he gave because I was like, I trust you and I'm seeing positive results, so. Building that trust, uh, that's the very first thing. Us as players, we should, we should trust them. They're, that's their job and um, anything that they, they tell us is just to help us out. And here, nobody is above anybody else. We all work together, we all trust each other and uh, take each other's word to, to help the whole, the whole team. My name is Jason Hahn. I am a physical therapist and I'm also the head of rehabilitation here at LAFC. My role as far as the head of rehab is anything from designing their activation and corrective strategies to rehabbing them from different injuries to get them back on the field as safe and effective as possible. My name is Luis Alberto Ramirez Torres, assistant athletic trainer. I'm part of the medical staff here at LAFC. Day-to-day -day function is basically we look to prevent injuries with these players and just keep them at their prime to compete. Basically have them ready so they can be 100% for the coaching staff from prevention to treatment to rehabilitation and then support the staff, support everyone else with any medical needs that are required. When it's very football specific, that's not my expertise. So I have to call on um, the strength and conditioning coach, the fitness coach, and then communicating what is the best way from a mechanical aspect and from a medical aspect to get them to the final product. When it comes to trust, I just think it's um, not forgetting that these players are also people and that we have to, to talk to them as people um, and then prepare them as an athlete. Long-term rehabs are definitely challenging. It's not just the physical aspect. From a mental perspective, is making sure that they know that this is going to be a long process. Han pasado ya un poco más de tres meses de de la lesión que tuvo en el partido con San José. We have another player down, Chris. Yeah, it's Chinela. Justo me agarró en un momento donde. Me sentía con mucha confianza, me sentía que estaba siendo mucho más útil al equipo, de que estaba aportando mucho más. Fue la lesión más larga que tuve porque me llevó tres meses y estuve 20 días con la pierna inmovilizada, que apenas podía caminar, así que bueno, eh, el hecho de ver a los compañeros por ahí entrenando y uno sentirse que no, no podía hacer nada, lo hace sentir un poco inútil a veces, un poco a uno. Pancho, he had an MCL sprain and he did not return during the year last year and now has come back into camp and essentially is full unrestricted. When he came back here, we had very little time that we needed to hold him back because he was able to check off all the boxes that we needed him to do and pass all the assessments that make us comfortable with him being out there participating full with no restrictions. When injury happens, it's like, a psychological avalanche. We just have to explain the whole injury process, take them through phase one, phase two, phase three, and so on. Creas o no, mentalmente, pues siempre hay desgaste, más cuando pasa uno por momentos de lesiones que quisiera uno estar adentro, pero por situaciones pues toca de afuera y tener ese tipo de personas que que están para ayudarte, para apoyarte y te ayuda a seguir trabajando y a seguir trabajando en la mentalidad de que toca recuperarse y de que 
es lo que, lo que toca, ¿no? With Eddie, uh, he ultimately had to have knee surgery because there are some injuries that happen where you can just, with time and with rehabilitation, they heal. And unfortunately for him, he suffered an ACL tear, and so that did require surgery. In los años que llevo de carrera, ha sido la primera vez que que una lesión me saca tantos meses de la cancha, y, y yo creo que me ha dado muchas enseñanzas el el ver desde desde adentro cómo funcionan las cosas, ver como algunos detalles que cuando están, estás ahí no lo notas y yo creo que me ha hecho valorar mucha, muchas cosas. Everyone always asks about professional sports. How do we get people back as fast as we do? And I think it's an art of understanding the medical side, the performance side, the player, and then pushing the limits in a good way where we don't flare them up too much. Well, my knees feel good, but fitness level is no good, you know. It's been a long time, so I'm starting to build it up a little by little. So we are getting there, so, yeah. Well, that moment, I was sad, you know. I like playing and you just suddenly, I got meniscus surgery, uh, like eight months. It was hard for me too, so the team and the players and the coaches helped me like overcome my fear. Me han ayudado muy bien los, los fisios a, a recuperarme, a no dejar ningún detalle librado al azar y que la vuelta a la cancha sea al 100% y bueno, no volver bien de la rodilla, pero a cuestas de acarrear alguna, algún otro dolor o alguna otra lesión, sino bueno, lo más importante que hablamos fue asegurarnos de estar al 100%. Son grandes personas, son grandes profesionales y aparte de eso hay un ambiente que que te hace olvidar todo, ¿no? Te hace olvidar de que hay días que no se quiere nada y llegas y, y te sacan una sonrisa, te hacen, te motivan otra vez a, a enfocarte en tu recuperación. Physically, they're very prepared to come into the preseason and do well. But also, we have to take into consideration they have not been exposed to team type of play for a while. So, paying attention not just to the original injury that they're coming out of, but monitoring anything else that may happen because it takes their body to a limit that they may not have been exposed to for a while. They keep encouraging me like, you can do it just a little by little, just push through it, you're gonna get there. And now, by the grace of God, I'm getting the strength back, so it's really amazing. Ya sé que, que pronto podré estar nuevamente ahí, así que me, me toca trabajar fuerte, trabajar el doble de lo que están trabajando mis compañeros para así poder llegar a pelear un puesto nuevamente, para poder ayudar y, y estar desde adentro haciendo las cosas ahí, desde ahí, ¿no? In a way, it's like we're teammates. I'm not the, the doctor or whatnot. I am your teammate in a sense. I'm not here and you're not here. We're both here. I just come with a different skill set. So together, how do we get you um, to that final product?